All right, hello class. Hello. All right, so this is our last day. We finished the book. And today we're going to do a little bit of a recap of what we've learned. And we started off with a term in the very first chapter called American Exceptionalism. That's a mouthful, isn't it? Do you all remember that? Do you all remember what it is and what it isn't? <laughs> well, we're going to talk about that a little bit. Uh, before we get into that, I want to read you something from the American Heritage website under the uh, heading AHA Code of Americanism. It says this, AHA was specifically formed to promote the teachings and opinions of the Founding Fathers. President John Adams meant of any other, unquote. So what I kind of want to do today is help you get an idea of what the teachings and opinions of the Founding Fathers were, specifically the Pilgrims. What, what were their opinions and their teachings and their ideas that they've passed down to us? Okay. Someone's got a question in the back here? I don't have a question, but I do have a statement. Okay. Um, Benjamin Franklin was one of the founding fathers. Yes, he was. By his opinion, is he not want an eagle to, a bald eagle to represent America? He wanted a chuck actually. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah as the he national bird, that is what he was looking for. Oh, wow. I can't remember. Well, that is interesting, a little interesting, that is interesting, a little interesting piece of information from history. Thanks for sharing that with us. Now, how many of you know what's going on on our southern border lately? Have you seen it on the news? What's going on? War? No, not war. Illegal immigration? Yeah. A lot of people are trying to get to America. They're coming from all over the world, from 160 different countries, but mostly from South America and Central America. They're coming by the hundreds of thousands. Now, the question is, why? Hundreds of thousands of people aren't trying to go to France, they're not trying to go to Germany, but they're flooding into America. Why do you suppose they're coming here? Yes? That's one very good reason. It's a free country. Basically, life here is better. We got better hospitals, better medical care, better wages, plenty of jobs. It's cleaner, it's nicer, it's safer. It's, it's nicer, it's safer. It's, North America is just better in every way for living than in South America. That's just a fact. That doesn't mean we're better people than they are. It just is a fact. It's better here. But why? Why is it better here? We need to think about that for a minute. If you throw a pebble into a lake, what do you see? A bunch of ripples going through the water, traveling, right? Have you ever sat on the lake shore and watched a speed go, speedboat go by like a mile away. And then 10 minutes later, here come the waves from that boat. Whoosh, wash it up on the shore. Whoosh. Took time for those waves to get there, didn't it? Our actions in life, everybody's actions in, in life, make waves through time and affect people, but sometimes... Hundreds of years later, there's an effect. The effect the pilgrims had on America and other great Americans that came here, their actions, their beliefs, the things they did, the things they didn't do, caused ripples through time that affected people that came later that even affect us to this very day. Now, when the pilgrims came to America, they came primarily for what? Somebody. Yes. Right here. Freedom. Yes. What kind of freedom? Uh, religious freedom. There you go. Okay. Now, when South America was settled, 
Have you ever heard of the conquistadors? No. No. No clue? I learned it in my own. Okay. Well, they were a very militant group, and they came to South America there to conquer. That's what the conquistadors did. They wanted silver and gold, and South America had a lot of silver and gold in the mountains that they could mine out. And so they went there, and they enslaved the Indians and forced them to mine the gold for them. And then they shipped it back to Spain, where they came from. You, you ever heard of Spanish treasure galleons? Yeah. They had so many ships going to Spain loaded with gold and silver bullion. Some of them sank in storms, and, and that's where we get all these stories of, of treasure ships, and we found some of those. But that's how South America got its start, with the conquistadors sweeping in, enslaving Indians, and they came for riches for themselves and for their country. That's quite a different start than America got with the pilgrims, isn't it? And pilgrims, they didn't come to enslave the Indians. They made friends with them and as much as possible tried to live in peace with them. So those actions had ripples through time that affect us to this very day. Yes? He did. He did. This, yes, the second time he was kidnapped, it was the Spaniards that took him. That is correct. So, this is one of the reasons that things are better now in North America than in South America. The pilgrims came here for religious freedom. To, they wanted to live godly lives. They wanted to live peaceable lives. They didn't come here to get rich and find gold and silver and find slaves. They... They came here for good reasons. Now, not everyone that came to America had America than in South America. The pilgrims came here for religious freedom. To, they wanted to live godly lives. They wanted to live peaceable lives. They didn't come here to get rich and find gold and silver and find slaves. They, they came here for good reasons. Now, not everyone that came to America had good intent. And, uh, and people certainly made mistakes in the past. But... We need to look to the people that had good intent and did good things and let them be examples to us because they have passed down to us a heritage. That's the name of your school here, right? American Heritage Academy. And heritage is something that is passed down to us. So we can, you know, like maybe if your mother was a doctor and your grandmother was a nurse, Maybe you'll go into health care and you'll say, well, that's my heritage. Our family likes to take care of people. So the pilgrims left us a heritage of freedom, didn't they? Yep. You, the first page I read to you when we started the book, and it's about American exceptionalism. American exceptionalism and greatness means that America is special because it is different from all other countries in history. It is a land built on true freedom and individual liberty, and it defends both around the world. The role of the United States is to encourage individuals to be the best that they can be, to try to improve their lives, reach their goals, and make their dreams come true. In most parts of the world, dreams never become more than dreams. In the United States, they come true every day. There are so many stories of Americans who started with very little, yet dreamed big, worked very hard, and became extremely successful. The sad reality is that since the beginning of time, most citizens of the world have, if time, most citizens of the world have not been free. For hundreds and thousands of years, many people in other civilizations and countries were servants to their kings, leaders, and government. It didn't matter how hard these people worked to improve their lives because their lives were not their own. They often feared for their lives and could not get out from under a ruling class no matter how hard they tried. Many of these people lived and continue to live in extreme poverty with no clean water, limited food, and none of the luxuries that we often take for granted. Many citizens in the world were punished, sometimes severely, for having their own ideas, beliefs, and hopes for a better future. The United States of America is unique because it is the exception to all this. 
Our country is the first country ever to be founded on the principle that all human beings are created as free people. The founders of this phenomenal country, and so they established a government and leadership that recognized and established this for the first time ever in the world. America is a place where the individual person serves himself and his family, not the king or ruling class or government. America is a place where you can think, believe, and express yourself as you want. You can dream as big as you can, and nothing is holding you back. Doesn't that sound like good news? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I have a question. Does American exceptionalism mean we're better people than those who live in other countries? No. No, I'm glad you got that. That's false. Okay. So what does American exceptionalism mean? If somebody asked you tonight, what's American exceptionalism, what would you say? So they've passed down a great heritage to you, haven't they? Yeah. Yes, that's I'm great. I'm just happy that one of my family members wasn't killed in the Holocaust. Well, yeah. Yeah. That's a great heritage, and you can pass that on and leave a legacy also. So you can give a heritage to your descendants. Okay. There are several ways you could describe what American exceptionalism is. So I'm going to give some statements. You tell me if this uh, helps describe it. A country where the government serves the people and not people serving the government. Go like this. (laughs) Yeah, that describes uh, American exceptionalism, doesn't it? Because a lot of countries aren't that way. And there are a lot of countries, you serve the government, and it's like the government is God. Freedoms come from God, not from the government. We're one nation under God. That's exceptional, isn't it? Yeah. A country where the rights of individuals are the most important, like freedom of speech, freedom of religion, and liberty. Does that help describe American exceptionalism? Yes, absolutely. Okay. Now, I talked a few weeks ago about why history is important. Do you all remember what we talked about? Why is history important? Yes. So we don't repeat it again. There you go. You nailed it. So we like, don't make the same mistakes again. Like how there isn't a World War III. Yet. Yes, we don't want a World War III, do we? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> yes. About the World War III. Yes. No, but people are worried that it could lead to that. Because in World War II, it kind of started the same way. Hitler wanted to take one country, and he says, I just want this country. And then he wanted another country. And we're like, well, we don't want to go to war. And we kind of didn't really take the threat seriously. But Hitler just kept taking more and more countries. And finally, we said, enough is enough. This has got to stop. And then we had World War III. So that World War II. So that's why people are kind of worried is this the start of another world war? People are hoping that doesn't happen. And we're trying not to make the same mistakes we made in World War II, which in World War II, a lot of people said, oh, just ignore it, it'll go away. Well, it didn't go away. Okay, um, where was I? Okay, so history's important so we don't make the same mistakes. And I'm sorry I don't know everyone's name, but I think it was you all the way in the back, you said, how do we know when we're learning history if the history we're being taught is true? My name is Harlow. What is it again? Harlow. Harlow. Okay, Harlow. So that was a really good question. And there are probably going to be times in your life, probably not here at American Heritage, but it may be in other schools, you're going to come across some history and it won't be entirely accurate because there are some people that revise history and kind of twist it to the way they want it to be, not the way it really was. And give them, like, the writer's picture. Like, the, the person who is better. Like, give them the picture. Yeah. Like, 
Uh huh. And they twist history that way, and we're all like, okay, and then we find out it's a lie from like other Right. So. And we're all like, okay, and then we find out it's a lie from like other journals. Right. So. The way, what you want to do, like when I prepared for this class, do you know what I did? I went and got uh, William Bradford's journal. And I, I looked at it before, but this time I went through it with a fine tooth comb and read everything in it to really get myself implanted with the ideas and the facts that came from people that were actually there. And that's how you know the truth about history. You go to the original sources, and investigate and read what the people that were there and saw it, what they had to say. So that's how you can check up on that. So watch for that throughout your life. Yes? Can you be a, his, um, a history teacher at DDB? Um, I don't think so because I'm going to... I don't think so because I'm going to be over at uh, Verde Valley Christian Academy. Uh, and I'll probably be doing oh, some teaching over that there. New school? Yeah, that's her new school. Oh, I yes. I oh. Because <laughs> I'm going to a new school and it's DVD. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. So, and I want history teacher. Oh, do they? History is fun. It is, and I'm so glad you think so. Who thinks history is fun? Say yay! Yay! yay. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, so learning from history. When you're learning history, a lot of times you're going to be required to memorize dates and names, and that's fine, and that's important, but it's not the most important. The most important thing when you're studying history is that you learn from the history. Yeah. So when you're... And remember the events in order. Programs? Well, one example is, remember that they initially tried communism or socialism. They had everything in common. They lived in like a commune and nobody had any private property. How did that work out? Perfect. Not so well. Not so well. What happened? Why did that go wrong? Exactly, exactly. And they wanted it to be fair, but it ended up not being fair, right? Yeah. All right, very well said. Yeah, so the people that worked really hard didn't get any more than the people that wanted to be lazy. So it just didn't work really hard, didn't get any more than the people that wanted to be lazy. So it just didn't work out. So they switched to what we call capitalism, where everybody gets to own their own land, grow their own crops, make their own sales, have their own profit. And then everybody worked hard and they had a great abundance and they yeah. celebrated with what? Oh, the first Thanksgiving Ru in 1621. Yeah, there you go. The first Thanksgiving in the year was 1621. Good job. Okay. Um, what else can we learn from the pilgrims? Who haven't I called on yet? Um, the, the, we can learn from when, um, the, and the, I think it was Squantook that, I think it was Squantook that showed the, um, pilg pilgrims, um, to put fish in the soil for their Yes. Okay. What else? Right here. You forgot. Okay. Well, remember, they went through some really hard times, right? No. They really had to, what's the word? Starts with a P. Persevere. Right? What does it mean to persevere? Oh, oh. Yes. Uh, go on, keep trying. 
Yep, there you go. Keep trying. Don't give up. That's what persevere or perseverance means. And they really had to do that. Um, there's a story that wasn't in the book that I want to tell you about. Remember, they were getting thrown in prison in England for worshiping God the way they want to. So they first idea was to escape to Holland. And so they, but how are they going to get there? Uh, the king of England, England didn't want to really let them go. Uh, they were hiding out. So they found a ship captain who would sail them over to Holland under the cover of darkness. So they all snuck out at night, got to this ship, got on board. And you know what that ship captain did? He made a deal with the king of England to turn them all in. And that's what he did. And they all got thrown in prison. Yes, again. So after a while, finally, they, got, they all got out of prison. Do you think they gave up? No. no, they persevered. They kept going. They found another ship and made a deal with that captain. Will you sneak us over to Holland where this river comes out? I'll come into the mouth of the river. You all sneak through the woods at night, and my, the ship will be there, and you can all get on board. We'll go to Holland. So that's what they did. The ship was in, in the mouth of the river, and the people came through the woods, and they were getting on board. Put your hands down till I ask a question. <laughs> and the men got on board first because they were helping bring stuff over so most of the men were on the ship and the women were getting ready to come over and get on the ship and here comes the king's soldiers they had been found out and the ship captain saw that the soldiers were coming and he didn't want his ship to be seized he didn't want to get thrown in prison so he had the anchors pulled up and they started to sail away and most of the women got left on the shore, and, the, and their husbands were on the ship. Can you imagine how upset they were? They're being separated. The men and the women got left, and a few of the men, the soldiers came and took them and threw them all in prison. And what a mess. Can you imagine how upset they would have been, how terrified they would have been? After they were in prison for a while, the people of England, it was quite a quite an uproar about it. People started saying, this isn't just, this isn't fair. You've thrown these women into prison. Eventually, the king let them out. All right? So, hold on, let me finish my story. So, here they are. Half the people are in Holland and half of them are in England. They finally get out of prison. Do you think they felt like giving up? No. They might have felt like it, but they didn't give up. And eventually, all those people that got left behind made it over to Holland, and the families were reunited. But this is just an example of the kind of hardship that they had to go through to get their freedom. Do you think they felt like giving up? No. They might have felt like it, but they didn't give up. And eventually, all those people that got left behind made it over to Holland, and the families were reunited. But this is just an example of the kind of hardship that they had to go through to get their freedom. And eventually, as, as you know, after uh, a dozen years, they left Holland and then they sailed to America. All right? So what can we learn from that? Yes, that's it. Keep trying and keep trying. Perseverance. You're going to face hardships in your life. And this is a good example, a heritage they've left us of not giving up. I see lots of hands uh, right here. Okay, so perseverance is one of the things that is a heritage they've passed down to us. A second thing is faith and hope. I mean, they had a faith in God, and they believed that good things would come after bad things. And that's something for us to remember when we're facing a trial and we're in the middle of a hardship. Just tell yourself, it's going to get better. It's going to get better. Because that's what the pilgrims had to do, and that's a heritage that they've passed on to us. I've told you that Squanto was kidnapped how many times? Two. Two times. But there's something else I haven't told you. He was actually kidnapped 
three times in his life. Yeah. Yep. Want to hear the story of the third one? Yeah. Um, so what, 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 did the, what did the three Um, I to be honest, I'm not sure. Uh, probably, but I I don't know for sure, because the account that I read didn't give the details about the children, so I don't really know. Okay. Yes. What about um like the people who went to Holland? and then their families that got left be behind. What happens if they don't remember who their family, wives, husbands are? Like, what if they don't remember? That's not something you forget. <laughs> you wouldn't forget your mom or dad, right? No. No, no. But and like, and husbands and wives, they don't forget each other yeah, either, so. True. But, like, how far is Holland from England again? Uh, I'm not sure exactly, yeah. but it's it's not f compared to the distance to America. It was not that far. Definitely. Yeah. But like, because of how many times it probably took them to get out of jail and then get caught again, get jail. Yeah, it was probably a, probably like, a year or so before they got back together. Yeah, because then all I thought of is was their families like forgot about them. Oh. <laughs> so. It wasn't like 10 or 20 years. It was only like yeah. maybe a year, year and a half, something like that, I believe. Yes, all the way in the back. Um, what you said, I have two things. Um, I about the family, like, heritage or something. Um, I about the family, like, heritage or something. I feel like um, the fathers of, like, family trouble, the fathers of my family have always been builders or welders. Uh -huh. Like my dad builds a lot of weird stuff. Like I, I think he made this like little guy. And his head was a circle, and he was just made out of all these like car parts, uh -huh. pipes, and he's he's still on our shelves. Um, and two, I almost said three. Um, I couldn't imagine remembering all those names for history if I can't remember five names from the anime I'm watching. I can't imagine remembering all those names. Uh-huh. <laughs> okay, you ready for the story about Squano's third kidnapping? Yeah. Okay, hands down until we finish the story. Your hand's going to fall off. <laughs> okay, so after his second kidnapping, he got free, and then that's when he came and he helped the pilgrims, right? And he actually lived with the pilgrims. Now, the pilgrims were all Christians, but they didn't force Squanto to become a Christian. Um, but he lived with them, and he helped them. And one day, <clears throat> a neighboring Indian tribe that was nearby, not Massasoit and his people, but another enemy tribe came along and kidnapped Squanto and made off with him. I, I could not find why they kidnapped him. Maybe they thought they would uh, get money for a ransom. Maybe they just wanted to kill him because he was helping the people from England. I don't know why, but they kidnapped him. So my and the pilgrims, they organized, they got their muskets, they put on their armor, and they went after Squanto. And they tracked the Indians that took him, and they found the village where he was being held, and they attacked the Indians, and they got Squanto, and they rescued him and brought him back. Ooh. Everyone go, yay! yay! Can you imagine how Squanto felt, felt after being kidnapped the third time? He's being carried away by these Indians. He must have been like, this is just my life. I was born to be kidnapped. <laughs> I bet he was pretty depressed about it. But he had made good friends with the pilgrims, and they loved him, and he loved the pilgrims. And they were not about to let him get taken, so they went and they rescued him. Isn't that a great story? Yeah. 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 And they let him get taken, so they went and they rescued him. 
Isn't that a great story? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And later, on, remember I said they didn't, they didn't require him to be a Christian or anything like that or try to force it on him? He just lived with them. But later on in life, Squanto got sick and he was dying. This is after he got older, okay? And, and he, he talked with uh, Governor Bradford and some of the other pilgrims, and he told them, he says, you've told me about this Jesus in the Bible and the God in the Bible that you serve and, and that he loves us. And, and he says, I want to know this God, and I want to go to his heaven. And so they led him to Jesus, and he became a Christian before he died. And I'm looking forward to seeing Squanto someday whenever I get to heaven. <laughs> but isn't that a great story? Squanto someday whenever I get to heaven. <laughs> but isn't that a great story? All these evil things happened to Squanto, but God used that. When he was kidnapped to Spain, he learned how to use fish to fertilize, to grow corn. He passed that on to the pilgrims. When he was in England, he learned how to speak English really good. So when he came, and while he was gone, he missed out on the plague that wiped out his whole tribe. Yeah. And then, so then he was so thankful for that. He, although he was really lonely for a while, he didn't give up, but he, he thought about others and helped the pilgrims, helped Massasoit's tribe. And, and then he got kidnapped the third time. But think of all, all these bad things. What came after? Good things came after. He was able to help the pilgrims a lot. He was able to speak English so that he could make the peace between the two tribes. He'll carry us through when we're going through hard times. All right. Yes. Okay, so. Wow. That's really an interesting story. Yeah, so we just, so my grandparents just kept one of, just kept those things. Because those are, because those are heirlooms. Yes, they are. They're heirlooms. Yeah, you want to keep those forever. Okay, we've covered two things that we can learn from the pilgrims. Their perseverance, their faith and hope. And number three, law and order and fairness. That was, that was who they were. Remember when they got there and they found out they couldn't settle where they originally intended to? And some of the, some of the people that weren't the pilgrims but were with them were saying, hey, I can, we can live however we want. We can do whatever we want. We can be a law unto ourselves. And the pilgrims said, we're going to draw up a Mayflower Compact and we want to ask everyone to sign this and agree to it. And that was one of the founding out of the Mayflower Compact. Here's what they wrote. Having undertaken for the glory of God and advancement of the Christian faith in the presence of God and one another, covenant and combine ourselves together into a civil body politic for our better ordering and preservation and furtherance of the ends aforesaid, and by virtue thereof, do enact, constitute, and frame such just and equal laws for the general good of the colony unto which we promise all due submission and obedience. First founding document in America. And their concept of law and order, uh, it was quite a bit different from the conquistadors that wanted to enslave the Indians, don't you think? In South America? Yeah. Uh-huh, yeah. Now, in fact, um, one of uh-huh, yeah. Now, in fact, um, one of the laws they made up was if an Indian committed an offense and broke the law and did something wrong, and that there, they would have a jury with, a, with a, a trial with a jury, and if it was an Indian and not an Englishman that committed the offense, the law said, we've got to have Indians on the jury so it's fair. Isn't that great? Yeah. So, what? A jury is when they have a court trial to see if someone's innocent or guilty, and they'll have 12 people in the jury, and they listen to all the evidence, and those 12 people decide innocent or guilty. And so they said, if it's an Indian caught doing something wrong, we want Indians on the jury too, so it's fair. Isn't that great? 
All righty. Perseverance, faith and hope, and law and order and fairness. Those are great things, aren't they? Somebody say, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so freedom is our heritage, but we must always stand strong to pass that legacy on to the next generation. And I want to conclude with this. President Ronald Reagan, who was like four or five presidents back, you, might, you probably don't remember him. You might have seen him on TV, but I remember him. This is something that he said. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do. Freedom is never more than one generation away from extinction. We didn't pass it to our children in the bloodstream. It must be fought for, protected, and handed on for them to do the same. Or one day, we will spend our sunset years telling our children and our children's children what it was once like in the United States where men were free. So we got to always remember what, what our forefathers have won for us, that heritage they passed down. It's like a baton they've given us in a race, and we need to pass it on. And that's why I'm here teaching you today. I hope I've implanted in your hearts some nuggets of truth, some wisdom that will help you, some knowledge from history. Uh, if someday someone comes along to you and says, I think we ought to be a communist country, you can work. And then they're going to say, boy, that person's too smart for me to fool. <laughs> All righty. I hope you've enjoyed this. Yay. Yay. Anyone who loves history say, yay! Yay! <laughs> when you're in the right school. <laughs> yes, you are. American Heritage is a great school. And you are a great class, and I appreciate you all so much. I see we still got a little time. I see some questions. Let's go back here. And who are they? Vicki, Joe, and Steve Anderson were the original founders of AHA. And uh -huh. Oh, my goodness. Themselves. Yeah. Really? The, the original founders of American Heritage Academy are descendants of Massasoit. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Wait, who's Massasoit? I'm impressed. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. I already. So, yeah. And they went back, their daughter just went back and visited his statue that they have in Massachusetts. Uh-huh. They took from the tribe here some seeds. Like, I guess they give, what was it? It's not seeds. It's something ground up that they introduce their ancestors to each other. So the tribe here asked them to take their seeds to introduce them to their tribe. Anyways, it's like it was a whole ritual. It's kind of cool. Oh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah. You know, that should be written up and put on the website. I know. That is one thing. I, we're trying to get better. Bring it back. Anyways, it's like it was a whole ritual. It's kind of cool. Oh, that's that's awesome. Yeah. You know, that should be written up and put on the website. I know. That is one thing. I, we're trying to get better. Bring it back. That's what we are. So, yes, I worked with them originally. So. Awesome. Oh, that's just, that's a great story. Love that. Okay, uh, right here. So, uh, like this. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that is just amazing. So, you do you are you going to be a doctor? Are you going to do it? You can do what he said in his journal. Well, it even said that 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 the name Dominic will run in the bloodline. Ooh, that sounds like the end of a book. Like a movie. Yeah. Do you all know the story of Ben Carson? 
he is a famous brain surgeon. But let, let me tell you about his beginnings. He was raised in poverty. They lived in the slums. Um, the dad wasn't around, so it was a single mother trying to raise him. And they just didn't have any money. It was a struggle to buy food. And he wasn't doing good in school. And all the kids made fun of him and called him dummy. And so his mother decided she was going to do something that would make a difference in his life. Do you know what she did? She took away the television. And she gave him books. You're to read books. And you're going to do book reports. And that changed everything. And he started, his grades started coming up. He started doing better in school. And eventually he went to college. He went to medical school. He became one of the most famous brain surgeons in the world. And, and after he retired from medicine, he, he went into politics and, and did a lot of good things for our country. And his name is Dr. Ben Carson. And uh, you'll see him on TV from time to time. He's very soft-spoken and quiet, a very quiet black man. But he's very, very smart. And whenever you hear him talk, just listen. Whatever he's talking about, it's wisdom. But here's a man who came from, from nothing, from poverty. And, and look where he got. And that is American exceptionalism. Revere and don't give up. Do your best and keep trying. Right? Yeah. 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 Okay. Uh, Chloe. What? She's giving you a thumbs up. Oh, thumbs up. Yay. Everyone give a thumbs up if you agree with that. Yes. Okay. All right. So who has... Uh, I want to give someone else a chance. I love everything you say, but I want to give everyone a chance right here. All right. So um, what, what is a brain... A brain surgeon. Yeah. Uh, he's a doctor that operates on your brain. Yeah. Neurologist. Yes. That's the official term, a neurologist. Uh huh. Back here? Yeah, you had your hand up? Yeah. Yes. Yep, that is a perfect uh, example of perseverance. Should first you don't succeed, try, try again. Yes, right here. Yeah, yeah, like maybe if they were in a car accident. And uh, One of the things he did was uh, he separated, there were some twins that were born, uh, joined together uh, at the head, and, and he was able to separate them, and that had never been done before. He was the first one to do a successful surgery of that. Right here. Did you forget? <laughs> okay, over here. A movie about Ben Carson. Yes, there is. And I saw that on Netflix the other day, and I thought, i got to watch that, but I didn't get around to it yet. Do you remember the name of it? I don't. Carson. Yeah. All righty. Well, I we think we've reached the end here. I appreciate you all so much. I'm going to miss you all. I'm going to miss teaching you. You all have a wonderful summer. I hope that the things that I have taught you stay with you all your life and that they're an encouragement to you. Okay, one more question. Oh, you're so. <laughs> oh my goodness! I'm gonna get. I'm gonna get swarmed. <laughs> I love you all. God bless you. <laughs> so many people. People. I don't like people. I like people, but. Whoa. Can I sign the shirts? Yeah, I could do that. Yes. You bet. All right. Leave your shirt out. With the, actually, probably bring it to him. And we can just give him a pen. And then you can hold your hand underneath.
underneath while he writes it. It's a little bit hard to sign their shirts. So if you want, bring them up, but hold your hand underneath so he'll have a heart or get like a clipboard actually and slide it in. There. Would it be easier if I came around to each desk? Yeah, I don't know. I don't feel like it's much easier. But uh huh. I don't know. You can try it. Try it. Why don't they all bring it to this desk right here? Yes, bring them here to, don't put them on top. Me desk. Stand in line and wait How do I get that? There we go. Oh, right. All right. So. Bring it to 